the spring of 2019, AZI will open a new facility in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The AZI Center for Genetics Guided Dementia Discovery, nicknamed G2D2. This new, state-of-the-art, 50,000-square-foot facility will house a unique drug discovery innovation unit designed to continue AZI's work in discovering novel medicines for Alzheimer's disease and other dementias by leveraging the power of human genetics. AZI's new Center for Human Genetics Guided Dementia Discovery is using insights from human genetics and human biology throughout the drug discovery and development process. So rather than just using human genetics to come up with new ideas, uh, beyond that, we're using human genetics to guide the way we're going to drug um, those targets we've identified. Human biology and data from human biology is embedded and intertwined throughout our drug discovery process. The new AZI Center for Genetics Guided Dementia Discovery in Cambridge, Massachusetts is a really exciting development for our company. And being in the heart of one of the most exciting and vibrant drug discovery hubs in the world, it will give us the visibility and platform we're looking for but perhaps more importantly, will allow us to collaborate in a much more direct way with all the incredible science happening in that space. Emerging human genetic evidence has linked Alzheimer's disease to genes that are expressed in microglia, the primary immune cell type in the brain. Recognizing the role that these cells may play in a number of related diseases, AZI scientists are working to create novel therapies for immunodementia, a state of immune dysfunction that may occur in diseases beyond Alzheimer's. Our interest in immune pathways really has come out of research out of the last 10 years or so um, that stems from human genetics. I think we've known for a long time that Alzheimer's involves loss of neurons, and that's why you have loss of cognition and loss of function. But there are other cells in the brain that support neuronal function. Don't think we realized until these genetic results came up that immune cells are actually critically involved in the function of the brain and turn out to be very involved in, in Alzheimer's risk. But it fits really well with AZI's focus. We have a long history in myeloid cell biology. Microglia are a member of this family, so this is a a nice fit with our capabilities and our interests. Science today is very collaborative. We're all really specialized. We all use very focused and defined tools. It's almost impossible, I think, for one person to make major discoveries. It takes teams. Of course, inside AZI, we have a big team focus, but we have good collaborations outside as well with academic groups, and I think Cambridge just adds to the possibilities here. We're really looking forward to being in this center of scientific excellence where we can establish some of these relationships that will help us continue to do collaborative science. Human genetics hasn't always been a routine part of drug discovery, and incorporating it certainly has its challenges. For example, a lot of times genes that are identified through human genetics are considered undruggable. They're not typical drug discovery targets. And so we have a lot of challenges in working in this area, but we believe it's worth it. One of the reasons is that data has shown that genes that are linked to a certain disease, if we go after those genes therapeutically, then programs are twice as likely to succeed in clinical trials. So we believe that this is sufficient incentive to really use human genetics through the discovery process, and we have to try to maximize how we do that. So at AZI, we try to incorporate genetics into discussions that we're having about identifying targets, but also about assay design, assay prioritization, target prioritization, biomarker discovery, clinical trial design, and so on, so that we're really using genetics throughout the whole process. We really have to make sure that we engage deeply with biologists and chemists and other scientists who are a part of some of the more routine functions in drug discovery. And we're lucky that we have a great team here. We have gotten a great genetics understanding from both junior scientists as well as senior leadership on how genetics can contribute. And so we're able to work very closely and have a good collaboration between the data scientists and the bench scientists. A point of pride at G2D2 will be its diversity. Scientists who will be a part of this site hail from a variety of countries and cultures. In addition, this group is very gender balanced over half of the managers who will be joining the G2D2 organization are women. Seniority is not a requirement for success at this site. Project leaders' years of experience in the pharmaceutical industry range from just two years to over 30. I've been at ASI for just over two years. I wasn't disappointed in, in the pace um, at ASI. Uh, within a year of, of starting, I was in Japan presenting um, my work to the company CEO, but I felt like I had a lot of support. We have over 50% of the employees um, at our site are female and 50% and of the managers. So there's a real emphasis on both management training and work-life balance. 
The G2D2 site will be just one component of Azai's worldwide R&D organization, which also includes research sites working on treatments for dementia in the United Kingdom and Japan. It represents Azai's belief in human genetics, as well as its relentless commitment to helping patients with Alzheimer's disease through its Human Health Care, or HHC, mission. AIMS has a track record of successfully discovering and developing new medicines for difficult to treat diseases like Alzheimer's. What makes AIMS unique is our human health care mission, HHC, in which we give first thoughts to patients and their families. We really believe that making the best solutions for therapeutics involves understanding what patients need and the only way to do that is to get to know the real experts, which is all of you who are living every day with Alzheimer's. All our employees, whether you're in research and development, you're in sales and marketing, or you're in accounting and HR, spend 1% or more of our business time, about two and a half business days per year, engaging in patient socialization activities, spending time with patients to truly understand their realities so that we can create new medicines and new solutions to truly meet their needs.